I just wanted to give you guys a brief background in recycling in Morgantown um, and just kind of do an overview of what the city's been doing. So uh, the city had an 80% trash, 20% recycling ratio, and they wanted to switch that around to 20% trash and 80% recycling. So in 2012, the city adopted the uh, Clean Community Project in single stream recycling, um, and our recycling provider is Republic Services, so they're the, the um, waste management company that comes and takes care of all of our recycling. And when the city adopted single stream recycling, recycling rates went from 78 tons collected in 2012 to 600 tons collected in 2013. And uh, while there's been significant improvements with the uh, single stream recycling, there's still some issues that we need to address, um, some limitations to the recycling program. Um, citizens have complained about inconsistent pickup. Um, recycle Republic um, service workers have complained about contamination from citizens in recycling bins, which makes it impossible to recycle a bin if it has trash in it. Um, there's been a lack of public education. We need to get more people to know what you can recycle, how to do it properly. And then um, also weak enforcement of state laws regarding recycling. And just briefly, I want to uh, talk about what that state law is. Um, in 1992, there was an amendment to the state code which stipulated that uh, each municipality with a population over 10,000 um, individuals was to submit a proposal um, to the Solid Waste Management Board to establish and commence implementation of a mandatory recycling program by July of 1995. So by July of 1995, the city was supposed to have mandated that um, each citizen in Morgantown recycle at least three recyclables, but obviously that was never enforced. It was essentially an unfunded mandate that never uh, had any backing. So just giving you guys a background in where we are with state policy and what the city's been doing. So uh, with that, I'm going to introduce our speakers for tonight. Um, we have John McGorman, and I apologize in the uh, program, I misspelled your name, I left off the mic in McGorman, so I apologize okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Incognito. Right. I, I, used That's good. I, I used to be an Irishman, now I'm not sure what I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is the area manager for um, Municipal Services for Republic, so he's here representing Republic. And uh, we also have Anthony Jambrone and Commissioner Tom Bloom, who are going to be talking about the county's recycling program. And we have Tracy Nabinshu from Western Universities. Um, you're the Interim Sustainability Director, correct? And then Tom Arnold, who's been working on recycling in Morgantown, single stream recycling since its conception. So thanks to all of you for being here. And with that, I think I'm going to hand it off with Mr. McGoran to Great. Thank you, Amanda. I'm a, I, I appreciate you uh, giving me a chance to speak to everybody. I have a couple handouts tonight, so um, and I'm going to uh, kind of expand upon some of the things that she spoke about tonight. So I'm going to hand out. I got a couple handouts here. I want to start with first, and uh, start with them over here. Start with that one first here. Start with those here. And probably need some. Probably need a few more. I'll take the, give me one of those, please, so I can talk to it. <laughs> that would help. Please, thank you. Okay, then here's some more things here. So what I'm passing on here, two things here, and it's kind of ironic, and, and Amanda and I didn't set this up before I, before I came today, but actually everything she talked about today uh, so far, I think we're going to probably give you a little more um, insight on it. So I'll wait, kind of um, wait for all those things to get passed out there. But the first thing that Amanda talked about was... Um, Recycling numbers, uh, what, what has happened to recycling in Morgantown since 2012 when uh, the clean community concept was uh, thought of in, in, our, in, in, in the town here and what, what happened. So what I'd like to show to everyone is, is that there, there, this on this sheet here, it's real, I think it's just, this sheet is just so indicative of what um, a program can do. You know, we can talk about all the things we want to do, but you have to give yourself and the people in the town the ability to succeed in the program. And so if you look at this piece of paperwork here, you see the first line, that was 2012. And that represents how many tons of recycling the city was doing, whether it be through commercial or residential. That gives you the total tonnage by month. And what's really ironic is you'll see in December of 2012, we did 25, our records say 25.72. So yours might be a little different, but this is our records. Kind of showing the same story. 25.2 tons is what we recycled. If you remember, we were using the small little 18 gallon bins. 
And in January of 13, uh, we del delivered those lovely green wheeled bins to what, all of the Morgantown. And you're going to see in one month, this is, and this is typical of what we've seen, is we went from 25 tons to 58 tons in the very first month. Now, we were delivering them throughout the month, so they weren't all out there. But you can see, come February, we were up to 78 tons. In two months, basically, we were doing what we're doing the whole year. So I think when I look at this program, it's been a great success, meaning we gave the residents the right facility, and that's being the right container, the right amount of education at that time to show them how to recycle. Can we do better as a community? Absolutely. But, and you can see then, uh, through 2013, 13, 14, and 15, numbers have actually continued to grow. So in 2013, we were at 846 tons. Um, we were 892 tons in, in 14. Right now, um, we're on pace just to be about 900 tons for 2015. I think that's a great success. You kind of mentioned that in your opening of what has happened. So I think that's a great success. Any questions about the numbers? And these numbers are very indicative of not only Morgantown, but if you go to many communities, and uh, I, de I, de I deal with some stuff in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, and in New York, these numbers are right on par. You can pretty much get a, a, a three, four, you know, if you're 25, um, you can get a, you know, four times greater than what you had. If you had one, you were getting four. If you had two, you were getting nine, something like that. Any questions on the numbers? Well, just being a student, I'm kind of curious, does it include the university recycling as well? These numbers don't, don't, don't include university. Because up until, um, I think in 2014 or 13, we signed, a, we worked out an agreement we were, this, the university used to do its own recycling, and then uh, about two years ago, we did another program. You know, we're doing the program with the university now, um, and uh, you know, the, the university is always trying to improve their program. But this does not include their numbers. This include cardboard, glass, paper, everything, everything. Yeah, everything. That's, that's everything in there. Which I tell you, the most ironic thing about um, doing single street recycling is that's what we went to here in a bigger cart is. Um, is cardboard is the number one thing you will find happens in a cart. If we remember the old bin, which was half the size of this table, it was too hard to handle cardboard. And um, when we did this, you'll find we actually did an audit where we actually took a whole whole truck, dumped it on the ground, and they put bins around the room and they sorted it all the by bins. We always assumed that cardboard only made up about three or four percent. When we actually did that, we found that cardboard was 23 percent of the total volume. Okay. And I would challenge everybody in this room, what has been the biggest change in retailing in the past five years? Online. Online. And how does it come to your house? In a box. Yeah. Cardboard box. Mm -hmm. Number one change in retailing today. Mm -hmm. You know, you can talk about smaller packaging, trying to do different things, or lighter packaging, but the number one change is cardboard. I know that personally too, because I can tell you personal experience, my wife works for a large department store. And she works in the in this department store. The name not really important here. The point is, it's a, it's a department store mm -hmm. up in Pittsburgh that they this department store actually decided to fill their orders via the store rather than taking it to a big warehouse like like Amazon does. And some days she'll have 50 orders that come through her store as a internet order. Some days they have 300 orders in their store as an internet order. My point being is that is how it shifted, meaning that one store might send out 300 boxes in a day cardboard. That's why I think single is so important. The other thing we did too that I, I failed to mention in the beginning on this is we took recycling from every other week to once a week. There was a little bit more of a charge for it, but there is going to be a charge when we're trying to bring more services to our residents. A good question. Any other questions on the recycling numbers? Um, I was wondering about the numbers of other how, other ways and how Morgan compares to other communities. Well, once you went to this program, you know, let me say this: you're be proud that you're the only community in in West Virginia that does this program. Okay, you are the first and the only city that is doing this program in the entire state, to the best of my knowledge and what I've done with research, you're the only ones doing it. Now, if we get up in Pennsylvania, there's many communities because unlike in West Virginia, in Pennsylvania, recycling the mandate, even though it's unfunded, to a certain point, it's not, it, they, they do do some funding, but you, you better do it or the state's gonna be chasing you down. <laughs>
down the street. So is the Pennsylvania vote municipal and county? It's 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 done through through the it's a legislative act that enacted for cycling in Pennsylvania. So it's mandatory for every city. It's, no, if unless you have less, if you have five thousand people or less in your community, you don't have to be in the program. But if you're more than five thousand, you have to do the program. And if you don't do the program, well. You're gonna get in trouble because they're gonna re, they're gonna you know they might might hold your liquid fuel tax if you don't properly recycle. You know that they kind of they, they have a chain there they can pull if they want to pull it out from underneath you and pull it pull the rug out. She's a it. legislator, so that's the well, right person to tell. <laughs> that's how they're doing it up there. That, that's how they that's how they mandate it. Um, but well, I was wondering. I mean, one of the reasons you recycle is so that you put less in a landfill. Yes. And I was wondering, when I asked about other communities, how we're doing, are we recycling at a good rate compared to other communities? Since we've done it, since we've gone to this program, absolutely. You're, you're, you know, where we were in the 20s, you're up into the 30s, you're higher now. You know, your percentage, your, your minimum waste compared to your recycling is definitely changed. I mean, obviously, we're putting 600 less tons into the landfill now. You know, as a landfill operator, too, some, sometimes that, that whole... Is it bad to put a landfill or not? There's some debates about that as well. But. Um, so in Pennsylvania, where they um, make them do it, what about the counties then? Even though it's cities of 5,000, then still there's probably a lot of counties that don't have it. The counties don't, the counties really don't get, they have, they do have some programs, but actual curbside recycling in most, 90% of the counties, the county does not get involved in it. It's all done at the municipal level. The, municipal, the municipalities are required if they have 5,000 people or more in their town. Moving on to the next handout I gave you, and, and ironically she said, hey, we need more education. So uh, this, I'm giving you folks this mailer, and Jenny, you know, we've been talking about this. This isn't the final project, but I was here tonight, so I actually, when we get down to the, um, get down to the Q&A at the end, I'll be willing to take some conversation about that. So this is a preliminary, this is actually more, it's more than preliminary, but it's getting towards the end of uh, what we're gonna be sending out to every resident in Morgantown sometime hopefully in the next 30 days. The last page does talk about recycling and you know I, I had a, I, I was working with someone in an email today said John how do you want to change the last page and I said let me hold my thoughts for today because I'm going to be spending the evening with a lot of folks in this area who are very interested in recycling. So when we get to the Q&A and also listen to you folks we're going to expand upon page three. Okay so uh, and one of the things we definitely want to do on page three is we're going to put some representation of these numbers just so people sh can see um, in the education piece, what their what their efforts has really come to mean in, in the community. Um, the last thing I mentioned it, and you did mention it about um, service. Uh, we have we have had some um, service issues over the past 12 months. Let me say one thing: it's not because we don't want to recycle. So I, I, I want to make sure that that doesn't get construed. That the reason why we did miss was because we don't want to recycle. Recycling is just as important as picking up the trash. Um, but we've had some difficulties. Um, I'm not going to get into why or why not. <coughs> uh, but it's not because we don't want to recycle. Our company is very, very interested in recycling. While our material doesn't go to a recycling that we own, Republic owns 78 recyclers around North America, so we're very entrenched and very much care about recycling. So. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Tom Arnold. I work for actually the parking authority, but we're not popular with parking, we get you in the trash. <laughs> uh, I did spend a number of years in the trash industry and uh, from griping at the city manager over the years, he asked me to help him out. So I, really what I do right now is I monitor the waste contract with Republic for the city manager as a part-time job. But to be honest with you, when you're a trash, when you're a garbage man, you're a garbage man for life. You don't really ever get into it and then get out of it. For some reason, it just grabs you and pulls you in all the time. So. Um, we do have a contract with Republic Waste. We actually uh, started this whole process in 2006 with the reality coming in February, or January of 2013. So there was some miles and miles and miles put into it. Uh, a lot of heartache, but finally we are starting to see some real uh, reward to the work that was done. So uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity because I was asked to talk about uh, how do we encourage clean and efficient uh, recycling and really the single stream kind of does that for you. Now, if we have issues with uh, contamination, we haven't gotten a report at the city that we're contaminated, but 
when I get into here, there's some issues that we have concerning residential trash, uh, which we're going to talk about very quickly. And John just outlined the new education program, which we do have in our contract with Republic. They have the education model through the contract. Um, new incentives. Uh, new incentives. Everybody's paying for recycling. If you're if you're a residential in the city of Morgantown, it's included in your bill. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of people that have opted out. It is mandatory that you pay for it but it's not mandatory for you to participate in it. Uh, that's kind of disheartening in a way, and it got to become a, a somewhat of political football when they started putting the little green bins out. And, I don't want to do this. Well, you know, you're really paying for it. This is the way we keep everybody's rates down is everybody participate. But, you know, the city said, well, we can't, we don't have a, any type of ordinance that makes it mandatory to participate only to pay for it. So only common sense is what you're paying for, why not participate? So what we need to do is revisit that as a city, go back and look at incentives. And the only incentive really, because economically we've already done that. We keep the rates very low because everybody participates in paying for it. But how do you get your participation rate up as far as the number of households? So this is something we're working with the local uh, Republic uh, team on because we would like to know what the participation rate is Absolutely. We don't know exactly if we're at 30%, 80%, 70%. We'd like to know that. So they're working on that now. Um, other than, than mandates, you really don't have an additional incentive. We've, like I said, we've already done the economic. So now the city's going to have to look at it and say, okay, now you're paying for it. Now let's everybody participate. And uh, that is somewhat of an issue. Uh, also, on New incentives is any new construction that's going on in the city, whether it's total renovation or new construction. Today it was an auto zone. We're getting a new auto zone in town. They already had their solid waste and recycling uh, containers on their on their plans. Uh, everybody must have uh, a waste storage area on, under new construction and have the capability to accept recycling. So instead of having one container size corral, now we're coming out with two container size corrals, so one can be solid waste. And thankfully, for the single stream, you can have just another container for recycling. So I think our biggest challenges are, and, and this is our biggest problem in the city that I wanted to bring to you this evening, was multi-unit apartment buildings. Uh, a lot of student housing here in the city of Morgantown. And the biggest issues we have is waste our trash management program on each individual site. Um, everybody likes to go with minimum. I mean, I don't know, it, you know, I, what's the minimum service I can get for the minimal cost? That's what I want to do. That doesn't work. Uh, the issues that we have facing this city is we need to really increase our uh, optimism or make it more mandatory to get in line with our new construction that everybody has a place to manage their waste, uh, whether it's recycling or trash manage or trash storage itself. And we run into this constantly in the downtown, you'll see it. You'll see trash bags sitting on a sidewalk. Why are they sitting on a sidewalk? Because there's no place in that building and they're not providing that for their tenants, whether residential or commercial. And they need to do that. And, and if they don't do that, they make an arrangement where their tenants, either residential or commercial, can take their trash to properly store and increase the recycling capability. <coughs> uh, it's a real big issue throughout the student housing areas. And then, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, throughout our entire city, every neighborhood has some form of student housing. And the issues that we have is we're trying to get the trash settled down to the point where Everybody's managed it properly. You don't see it. Because if you go to many campuses around this country, and I toured three, and I went specifically to three that were Morgantown with large universities, and you didn't see trash containers. You didn't see trash. You didn't see litter on any of the campuses that I visited. And they're very, con they concentrate tr uh, tremendously on the effort of each individual property owner 
property owner managing the trash on their properties. So whether it's a private, you know, your own residential, or it's it's a uh, multi-unit or a commercial establishment, the property owners must provide adequate trash storage and ability to create a, an understanding so that recycling can be accomplished. So I think that's our biggest challenge in the city right now is getting property owners into the fold to understand uh, and create issues because every day I'm out about a trash issue, it's either not enough service or not enough service. You know, and they'll have a two yard container and 24 beds and that does not work. So we're trying to work with Republic on their sales end to say, look, if someone's coming in, wants to, uh, you know, consolidate their trash, get rid of all the little containers in each household, then make it large enough, and then also work with them to create a corral and make it so that uh, we can eliminate the problems associated with trash exposure. But to me, every day, this is the number one thing. So uh, other threats that we have is volatility in the market. And I think, you know, when you're looking at the recycling end, it's different today, and I'm sure John will agree, it's a lot different today than when we started in 2013. The volatility in the market is because the global market is having issues. China, uh, Europe, uh, all e Asia, all these things, you know, influence how this recycling will work, what items can be picked up, and uh, because when we started, I mean, it was a $35 a ton rebate. Now that's out the door. Now trying to keep up with the issues of uh, uh, how we adjust to the market, and we always thought through this whole process, is we want to set up a program that will work even if the market is totally flat. You just can't say, okay, we're recycling today because this is really great, Oh, next year it's really bad because China's having economic problems and all our cardboard essentially is going to China. We have to have the ability to meet those markets. So that's the challenge today. Also, if we increase the amount of recycling, I mean, we went from 198 tons in 2012 to over 800 tons in 2013. That puts a strain, too, on the infrastructure for the haul. So that it gets transferred. I mean, you're picking up that, all that 800, and what WVU does, that goes to the transfer station. So their transfer station is now handling trash and recycling, and there's only a certain size as uh, allowed by the state DEP. So we have to be concerned about that. And uh, uh, transportation costs. Though fuels have gone down. Fuels have gone down, but everything else associated with transportation has increased. I mean, wages, equipment costs, uh, maintaining that equipment, uh, keeping up the area, the vehicles, liabilities. Liabilities, I think, has had the biggest influence on that industry in the last 20 years is the amount of uh, you know, lawsuits, everything associated with its employees, uh, going on to the property, uh, <coughs> accessing containers. Uh, it, it's just been a major concern for them, which spills back on to us. So these are some of the things that, uh, that I'm concerned about and, and how we can proceed and grow this for the future. If we can get the multi-units into a situation like we're doing with new construction and we have containers for trash, and containers for recycling. Uh, that would work out extremely well. One thing I can report today, which we're very excited about the public safety building is the number of dumpster fires are way down. <laughs> and that is huge. That is huge because, you know, uh, if, you know Captain Tennant from the fire department can tell you, he studied if we had proper corrals, proper security, that would help eliminate that and totally uh, eradicate that type of program. So I hope I didn't overdo my seven minutes, but that's <laughs> all I had. Thank you. I have a quick clarification question sure. for both you and Mr. McMoran. If for businesses and multi-family residential areas, they're considered a business, and it wouldn't, as of right now, if they were to pay, 
landscape recycling in their building, it would be an extra fee. It's not included within okay. that price, correct? That's right. So I we mean, would be in changing that. What, what you have to understand, when they put a truck out, that's for trash. When mm -hmm. they're going to do recycling, that's a, another truck. Mm -hmm. It is essentially all the same cost, except for what happens on the disposal side. Okay, so, but what that gets down to on a per ton basis, or per household basis, or per business basis, it gets down to, there's only a few dollars difference between recycling costs and, you know, uh, trash disposal costs. So you would think there would be a whole lot of difference in there. But as I said, there's so much outside influence that we have to work around on the infrastructure as well as transportation. To make. So yeah, the, the thing is we can put in an eight yard container and two fours, you know. Uh, but the two fours, again, you're going to have two trucks instead of one. You're going to go, instead of once a week, you're going to have a minimum twice a week because each container is going to get picked up once a week. So we as a community and as generators, we need to be aware of that, understand that, that that is all part of the pain, because there is pain associated with it. Because everybody, oh, we're recycling. So automatically the prices are, are cheaper and a lot, they're not. There's a, lot, there's a lot of issues to work through, but we can be sustainable. Uh, we are proud that we started uh, single stream. We don't understand why the state of West Virginia does not recognize Morgantown for the single stream program. We used to get, uh, every year, I would get a, 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 a thing from them to fill out. And once we started single stream, State Solid Management Board quit sending us that. Because there is a huge influx. And the problem is, is the prejudice, oh, we're going out state. Well, we're part of a region. And luckily, Allegheny County has more people than the state of West Virginia. And we're able to tap into that, get all our uh, recycling going that way to tap into that. If we were trying to do it on our own, we would never make these numbers. We should get an award for collaboration. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. we're lucky to be located where we're at, and we're only 80 miles from a place that can do it. So, does that answer your question? Um, I just want to briefly explain how we do recycling at the university. Um, it is similar to what Tom talked about in the city. We do have single stream recycling. But public services is our vendor, just as it is in the city of Morgantown. But I wanted to talk about kind of the reason that we went with single stream recycling on campus and kind of the, the results of that implementation. So um, in 2013, we signed a contract <coughs> with Republic Services and started in the fall of 2013 transitioning our buildings to that system. Um, before we were a source separated system, so plastic went in one and paper in the other, aluminum in the other, and went to this um, convenient single stream system. And there were a few reasons for that. We looked at some national studies of recycling at universities. We're a university, so we like research, right? And we also did some of our own surveys on campus about what we could do to increase participation in recycling. And we found that there were three major factors um, inside the university as well as at other universities that increased participation. And that was easy to understand. They needed it to be easy to understand. Single stream does that for you. Um, single stream does that for you. It can all go together in one bin. We needed it to be convenient for people. And on campus, for us, that was a lot about access. We didn't have enough recycling bins on campus. We had tons and tons of trash cans, and we had kind of a recycling bin pepper here and there, but we didn't have them located together. We didn't have that convenience factor. And then consistency. We needed recycling to look the same all across campus in Morgantown. And we have over 80 buildings in the city of Mor or in the Morgantown area for our Morgantown campus, large and small combined, and we wanted recycling to be consistent across all those buildings. So we went with single stream recycling. At the same time, we um, instituted an empty your own trash model on campus in all of our individual offices. So um, me in my office, I collect my trash and recycling in my office, and I take both of those out to a hallway station um, where previously custodians were entering offices and emptying trash, but not recycling. So now it's a self-service to the hallways for all of that. Um, we've implemented it in over 75 buildings so far. We still have a few little small of our smaller buildings to, to go through, and then we will be doing Health Sciences Center at some point in the future. And since in, um, in our transition year, 
<laughs> and our recycling volume increased 12%, 12% in our transition year. So that means not every building was on board with empty and trash and single through recycling when we saw that increase. So when we have a full year of measurement with all of our buildings doing the single stream recycling, we expect to see that go up some more. Um, and this is just a, an example of what our recycling guide on campus looks like. And this is an example of that consistency that I talked about on campus. We wanted our bins on campus. If it's recycling, we want it to always be blue. Um, our dumpsters for trash are green, and then Republic Services does do some separate cardboard dumpsters at some of our locations. Um, they talked about uh, cardboard being a huge thing that is our, our largest commodity in single stream on WV's campus. Paper is second. So some of our buildings that are high cardboard volume generators do have their own separate dumpsters for that. But this is just an example of what you would see in an office, what you would see in a hallway and then what you see in some of our public lobby spaces on campus. And to the student that asked about what our tonnage is on campus for single stream, um, we do about 500, I think our last fiscal year was about 500 tons of single stream. Um, our overall recycling tonnage was about 1,300 tons, but that includes a lot of other things like metal, uh, we recycle mattresses, we do all kinds of other uncommon stuff, but our single street portion was about 500 tons. And then I just wanted to mention <coughs> also a couple of our um, programs that touch the larger Morgantown community. And one of those, this is kind of our full circle thing that I like to talk about. Um, on student move-in day, when we have over 5,000 students moving into residence halls on campus, we focus on cardboard that day. A lot of students moving into residence halls have new TVs, new vacuum cleaners, new everything, and that generates a lot of cardboard. So, and on August 14th this year, just in about a nine hour period, we recycled 10 tons of cardboard. Then another program that kind of brings that full circle is these students are getting all kinds of new things when they move onto campus in the fall. And then a lot of times in the spring, we see that coming back out in the waste stream. <laughs> so um, we have an outlet for that at all of our residence halls and at different locations around the city of Morgantown. We have some pods set up where on and off campus students can donate unwanted goods. We set them all up um, in the football stadium, in the concourse, as you can see here. And we have a giant yard sale-like event and all of the proceeds go that uh, from that sale go to the United Way. So that's just one of our recycling events that kind of touches the larger community. I had this whole idea of what I was going to do, and then I saw the direction and what people were asking. So as Barb, Barb Flesh Hour, who's probably, if we would have 100 House of Delegate members like her, we would not be having the problems that we're having. Unfortunately, as we've all talked about, Recycling is not the most popular, and I know th this will give you an idea. I, s I started looking around the room, I'm a teacher, and I'm looking at who I'm going to speak to. The majority of people are, what, young. And the thing is, but who owns the buildings and who runs the businesses and so on? They're not the young people. So that's when we talked about changing the, the culture, that's what we need to do. Now, what I was looking at real quickly was, in 2002, I saw that there's what's called the Solid Waste Authority, and that's the uh, elephant in the room that we haven't talked about. And knowing me, and Barb knows me, I will bring up the elephant in the room. Now, the state law says that there's a five-member board, and catch me if you're right or not, that is supposed to come up with a long-term plan and to educate the community. But Tom hit it right. If there is no one there who says just because you have to do it and there's no consequences, then it's like a little kid then, you know, you can say you have something, but whether you do it or not, and that's where you run into. So from 2002, it was, it was started real well. We had, and I didn't even know I saw Tracy mention the word, source separate system, okay? That's what you had for, in the, in the county up until 2012. And the solid waste study was very successful for, for one reason, they were a monopoly. And what finally happened in Republic, whether Republic got in because of financial reasons or because the law changed, and that I don't, I don't know the real reason. But Republic got involved and said, you know, they were going to be able to help out when uh, Tom was on the board, and I think you all decided in the city 
and this is one of the areas where people don't understand. This is where the city, WVU, and the county are working really well together. And what basically happened was they said, let's go to single stream, WVU, Star City, and also uh, people started going to single stream. So all these people that were just dropping off all these, the bins, and they were picking it up, and even Marion County, I think, was involved. They were adding to this enormous amount of recycling at the time. What happened was, for whatever reason, I won't get into politics, Solid Waste Authority decided not to go into single stream. So everything changed in the county, on, and I'll hand this out, on January 22nd, 2015. Solid Waste Authority halts recycling. And I'll just pass this around, so you can just read, and there's a couple articles, real articles in there. What basically happened in a nutshell was the county commission was giving funds and also they were at the time of Solid Waste Authority on our property. They decided for whatever reason that they were making so much money they were going to move to another property. Is that correct? It was right. And pay an exorbitant amount of money that seemed to be fine but then at the same time the market dropped out of the recycling. So you had that, you had everyone switching the single stream, yeah, and less, then there was the less. Yeah. So and they and they blame and you know and Morgantown got blamed. WVU got blamed, and I'm i you know, we and I have a differences, but that was no reason to blame for they look what they did from 78 tons to 800 tons. So they were doing what was needed for modernizing. The yeah, we were moving forward. We tried to get the Solid Waste Authority to do that. The County Commission has two of five members that were allowed to elect. We can keep electing two people, three beats two every time. So we called them in and we started to get concerned that they were losing a lot of money. I believe they had a million or more dollars, you know, and they were using it, you know, to, they weren't bringing in the money. They, they were losing the money. Then we, then yada, 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 we realized that we were going to hold up the rest of the money until we got a better idea because we didn't even get what we require when we hand out money the way county laws and the same thing the state is. You got to give you know, uh, an accounting of where you're spending it. Well, that's when the problem hit. And they were basically doing kind of, I'll say, what Star City's doing right now. You know, trying, paying Peter pay Paul, you know, they were taking it from all over and so they ran into a problem. So basically, the best thing that happened to the county was that, was that because all of a sudden, recycling stopped and everyone got angry. And that's really the only way, way things got changed. Uh, I started to, I, I thought I knew what I was doing, <laughs> and so we first said, okay, we're going to put these bins out, like we did before, after it had stopped, and then we would go, the solid started would pick them up. Well, if you wait and stop for a period of four weeks, and everyone had the recycling, most people said, okay, well, we'll drop the recycling off, and everyone in this room probably would have done that. What was happening was, that we would clean the bins with Republic, who was going out there, we were paying Republic to come and pick them up, bring them back at 5 o'clock at night. At 6 o'clock the next morning, we had the bin filled with garbage, that you name it. It wasn't just recycling. And this, when we, we would went, there was 20 feet easily wide with, with crap. So the system wasn't working because we weren't able to oversee or control it. So that's where, and, and I can't say enough for, you know, I, I panicked. I know Jamie and I, you know, we're thinking, you know, Jam, you know, I put Jamie in charge, so, you know, we got to come up with something, and I went to, and I, I can't say enough, I don't know why they keep saying the interim, because Tracy has been the godsend for the county. I, I want to be, a, I want, you deserve the credit. Then I went to Tom and said, Tom, what do we do, how do we work out a contract with the Republic, and Republic has been amazing. And a lot of people get mad at the Republic, but with the county, they've been great, you know, because they, we, have, we were able to set up a system, so we set up a two-fold pro program. First, Westover got a grant, so, and then we helped fund them by giving them a truck and so on. I keep looking at Jam because this is all very fresh. This is all in the last year. And what on Monday through Friday from roughly 7 to 3.30, 7 to 3.30 you could drop it off during the week. Well, that still didn't resolve the problem of a community that was feeding for more uh, recycling. So we tried to figure out what could we do, and we opened it up first. We put the bins back at several sites, and unfortunately, the mall, the, the old mall, the new mall. Nobody the, wanted us. Nobody wanted us because they the destroyed it. People who were recyclers 
We're taking it and just dumping it. We were there the day that we had lo I lost it. I mean, I had someone try and run me over <laughs> because I was really mad. I was chasing after her. And they were just dumping right there. I mean, it was full. And we had signs and we posted signs. Please don't dump it. The, the, the thing is full. Well, they were angry as several people said, well, I drove it out here, I'm going to drop it off. So all of a sudden, then we ran into a garbage nightmare problem. Walmart was the only one who allowed us to keep the bins out there, and then we, what we figured out, we, we did a time span of uh, roughly four hours. That's why on Saturdays from 7 to 11, you can go out there, and we came up with the idea of using single stream because we, we felt that was the best way to do it. Uh, Republic, we worked out a contract and so on. And uh, and I want to say it now. Walmart so it, didn't do it. For, it's every, well, it's the first four. Okay, it was every other Saturday in the beginning because we didn't have any money or funding. Then la this past funding year, we pe we spent a hundred thousand dollars, and we do it roughly the first four Saturdays, except for holidays and so on. And so, but only fifth Saturdays or holidays. Or holidays, and um, I, you know, it just went extremely well. Now, let's just say Walmart didn't do it out of the goodness of their heart. We, when I went and met with them, I said, well, why are you willing to stick with us? Their business went up 15% every recycling. Why? Because the majority of people were coming from Cheat Lake or other areas saying, okay, we're here. We're going to go to this. So they love it. They, I mean, the first place they cleaned with the first day was a snowstorm. They cleaned the path so these people <laughs> could come from the road to the recycling and to right through to the business. And it really worked. Now, real quickly, and then I'll shut up. Um, my last two minutes. This is a form that we handed out, and this is what peop people are still not believing. I mean, I, I still say, we get about 20 people each time that say, no, you're not really recycling. We hear you're mixing them up and throwing it in the, in the land. No, you're not. So what we did was we had a breakdown. We asked Republic to help us go through and read yeah, something. We did an audit. And did an audit. Whereas you did the one, we did an audit for a month, and you could see, look at the cardboard. It's up to 38%. You know, so we broke down everything that we're doing. So people said, oh, we wanted to we explain to them. You also can see, and when you go to the second page, that you know, we, we started Mon County, Westover, then in the Marion County, what we did there was we have the Western end, which is back to the <laughs> sewer separate system, because there just isn't enough out there, and Marion County is picking up the thing at the Marion County, their solid waste authority. Uh, but you can see, we, you know, we started at three tons, you know, eight tons a month in February. I mean, we're at 50 tons now a month. We now added to what they're saying is another 390 tons that we've done. And then you see how many cars come in. And then what we did was we took it. I mean, I admit it. We, we asked if we could take the city of Morgantown, and they said we, we were allowed to do it. Their concept of it, so people know what's recycled. And we came up with a website that Tracy has been wonderful in, in adapting it with, you know, I, I can't say no, She's, she doesn't know I was going to do this. But I mean, I, I mean, the city of Morgantown and WVU made it available and they're, we didn't reinvent the wheel. We saw what they were doing well we went to the county. Now, I will leave with this. Here is the problem. Why are we not picking up door to door in the county? Because we can't. The law is very clear. I don't have the authority as a county uh, commissioner. It isn't like a municipality where you can say, okay, I'm going to charge a fee and then set it up. We don't do that. We also have seven different, what do they call them, haulers? Seven different haulers in the county doing garbage. Only one has a recycling license. So we can't have Republic go out to the western end because they're not allowed. So you run into that problem. Then, let's just say they were able to do the whole county. Now, if people in Ashton Estate say, well, I want, uh, I know, I'll pay my $5, or what do you pay, $1.70? Dollar. Dollar? Yeah, okay. Dollar? But say, say we'll pay what a couple it? bucks. Dollar eighty seven. $1.87. $1.87. We'll pay my $2, let's say. Well, that's fine, except, has anybody ever been past Clay Patel? I didn't even know there were towns called Juana. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I didn't even know they existed. Don't tell them that. Yeah, we are talking, <laughs> going up Bertha Hill. So the same cost that the person in Ashton Estates or out in Cheap Lake is would have to pay the same price. Well, I couldn't even imagine Republic bringing out a truck up the recycling up those hollers. So it would have been, it's astronomical 
what the cost would be. So basically, that is why we ended up with the program that we have. And I don't know if there's anything else I could, you know, go ahead. I do want to say this, though. It's real easy to talk the talk in recycling. I see people in there, and I'm going to throw it out and throw it out at the WVU students. We need volunteers to work on Saturdays. The way the program has worked, we've had Boy Scouts, but, you know, we've had some different people. We have sometimes, for an hour or two, all we need you to do is go out there and help the people, curbside service basically, dump it in. We don't have the people, and everyone talks about where we really care about recycling. There's a difference between action that speaks louder than words, and there's a big difference when you're there at 7 in the morning. And I never thought at 61 I would definitely be there, you know, picking up recycling every day and dumping it, but, but it's working. And, and bottom line is to the WV students, my daughter, the best thing I can say, I am not a recycler. In fact, I really than like do ever do recycling until it came to the community and I realized roughly one third we have made such a difference that one third of the garbage that was going into the dump from the county is now not going into those landfills. The other thing is in the county, the city you can't dump it because you're going to get caught. In the county you can take this stuff and just throw it over the hillside. So we had to give them an incentive for why to come here. So as I said my daughter's thrilled that she can't believe that, you know, finally she's gotten to us. But that's why it's working. I'll bet you when you drive, you see the little kids saying, Ma, I'm pr I mean, they're out there. If we can get at that age, and they know about it, what can we do about increasing our age to start doing it and getting them excited about recycling? And that's it. I'll, I'll shut up. Yeah, go ahead. The only, only, only go thing ahead. I want to say yeah. is on... On our webpage that Tracy designed, that I updated <laughs> with her help. Uh, but uh, all, all our events are there. They're right. all highlighted and all that good kind of stuff. And it's Mon County with county spelled out, recycling.com. You can get us on the county commission website. You can get us on the Salt Waste Authority website. Direct links right to us. And it's a good site to visit. It's, there's a lot of information on it. There's maps on it to, uh, to the western end. And unfortunately, we are going to lose the Wagetown site uh, right. on uh, the 16th of November. Uh, it, it's not doing enough business out there. It's cost prohibitive for Marion County to run their truck. Our truck, actually, we give them a truck, uh, a, what's the haul, what's it called, a hook lift. We give, a, we give a hook lift truck to them, a 42 bins, and, uh, and we give them a, a forklift for their, uh, for their office. And then Western, we give a truck to also to do the same thing. We give them eight bins. So that's how it works. But if you just visit our site, that's what I'd like to leave you with. Visit our site, take a look, any questions. There's ways to volunteer, there's ways to ask questions and all, all that good stuff. And it, it works. We keep it updated you know, every day. And this is where you know, the front page this is in color. But it will be in color. Amanda, I'd like to throw it back to, hit, to Republic and say to that last page, one of the things that's real exciting is there are two new mandates that we have to work on. One is what, recycling batteries and what was it? Recycling? Electronics. And, electro and electronics. And we now have to, do, I think there's a mandate and recycling and Republic has said, let's try and work out. How we do that yet, we don't know. But we're working out like PACE now is going to work instead of Republic having to work with somebody from Greensburg, they're going to work with PACE on recycling. So there's a lot to go on and I think that's mandated recycling by the legislature. Yeah. Can I say one more thing, Amanda? I want to recognize somebody the, uh, here. Was, yeah. Really quick. Really quick. That's news to me. Laura Stiller sitting back there, yeah. a pioneer in the recycling industry. And this, and this kind of seriously, Laura. Yeah. yeah. With the Salt Waste Authority, I mean, her and I, and we go way back to... It's kind of back where it was with the Saturday pickups. That's yeah. how it started. That's yeah. how it's all started. And, and Laura's been there since the beginning of this. And if there's any questions or anybody has any more knowledge than her, I don't know who it would be, but in this county anyway, that's all I want to say. I'll answer any questions you may have. The, one of the things we could do, a potential option, as far as enforcement for contamination, <coughs> is to actually, um, pursuant to state law, put a law in city code that says if you contaminate recycling bins, you will be fined. And working that out with the city, uh, working that out with the city council, how do we get that law going? Um, what that would probably look like would be um, somebody from the city working with a Republic official going around and checking recycling bins randomly, random checks. And uh, first issue a warning, everybody, this is a new ordinance. We're doing this. If you are contaminating your recycling bin, so, um, we're going to be fining you. So that's one option for a solution. Kind of a negative option, 
might get some opposition. I don't know if people would like that. I don't know if that's the best option, but it's an option. Um, secondly, I kind of misspoke when I said that the state law that required three citizens to recycle was an unfunded mandate. It is an unenforced unfunded mandate. There is funding for recycling programs in the city. Um, if you, we, the city can apply to with the DEP, and there is $150,000 available to municipalities such as ours that comes from $2 fee levied on um, waste that goes in the landfills. It's been, I forget what year, but it's been happening for like 20 years. There's up to $150,000 available from the state that the city can use to implement a new recycling program, whether that be an educational sticker, sticker program like what WVU has. So what we would do would get everybody a sticker in the city. You put it on your inside, on your personal trash bin that you have in your kitchen, in your garage, whatever. The sticker goes on there. Visual representation. This is what goes in. This is what does not. We do that. We could use state funds for that. Or also, we could use these state funds to um, work with a partner to do a recycling incentive program. There are two that I want to highlight. The first is um, Coke's Recycle and Win. The city of Charleston is currently using Coke's Recycle and Win program. Um, if you partner with Coke, everybody, you can opt in. Coke would send out a mail, um, mint list. If you get a sticker, you put your sticker on your bin, you are choosing to opt in and participate in this program. If you recycle a lot, and if you recycle correctly, um, it's like the Coke wagon. It's a vehicle that comes around and they scan your recycling bins. You get coupons for your local grocer if you recycle properly. Similarly, there is an organization called Recycle Bank that cities can partner with, and it's a little bit more official than the Coke Recycling and Win. Um, the city council would have to approach Recycle Bank and sign a contract with Recycle Bank. And what it would happen would be a sticker goes on the bins, and um, a sticker, a scanner, an FDI, are what's called scanner goes on either the trash trucks or a public employee would be using them and scanning these stickers if there's an issue if there's contamination it's marked down if they're done correctly it's marked down and also how much it is is marked down um, and in city in philadelphia they implemented the recycle bank and um, in philadelphia rates increased from seven percent to ninety percent in a matter of months and um, consumers can save 10 to 15 dollars a month on their local grocers through recycle bank so that's another option incentive programs um, or like door hanger programs have been successful too um, studies have shown that if you present citizens with a negative image if you present them with a door hanger that says like 10,000 school buses full of plastic will go into landfills every year if you don't recycle like just because in your city or something then people see that and they think, wow, that's really bad, we need to recycle. Um, negative images work best when approaching the public. So we could use state, the 150,000 in state funds to implement any type of those programs if the city were to approach it. The applications are due in July. So if we could get some type of working group together, if any of you are interested in talking about solutions afterwards, uh, working on this application starting now, looking to have it done by July, um, those funds are available and they're not really being used so they should be used because they're designed to help the city. I, I just want to clarify some things about that grant because I am intimately familiar with that grant. Um, first of all, the city, and I think this isn't a problem in Morgantown, the waste from the city to be eligible for that grant, the waste from the city has to be taken to West Virginia landfill. Um, yeah, that's which, not a problem in Morgantown. Okay. I, I'm sure it's not. The garbage goes to Short Creek, Short Creek which is over in, in Wheeling. 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 Right. Yes. Stays West in West Virginia. Virginia. That's, okay. that's the biggest thing. Other cities on the border counties have issues with that. Also, that grant can be used for things that, other than just education. So be really open-minded when you're thinking about solutions because it's it's almost an open-ended grant. I mean, there are, there are some things that you cannot apply for, but it's pretty open-ended. But it is restrictive. I mean, they don't give out the money. Not everybody who applies for it gets it. And if you apply for 150, you might get 50. But you might get something. If you don't ask, you don't get. Because okay. I know several people in the HOA or in the just several homeowners up there have said, you yeah, know, we'd be interested in having curbside pickup. We'd be willing to pay, you know, three, five bucks a month extra to have it picked up. But we don't know how to get somebody okay. up there. Here's the problem. He says nobody's licensed. Action Estates wants it. But not at all 100%. So say 80% right. pay. Who pays? You know, if there's a fee and it costs, who pay? There's no way to force those 20% to pay. 
you're not. That's allowed always to do that. that's always happening. And that's the you problem. You can't do that like house by house. No. So you have to all or not. The cost is astronomical. The cost is prohibitive. Yes. That's what you don't want to do. Realistic. Can I? I'd like to address that. I think you're absolutely right. I live yeah. in South Montgomery County. I'm in no man's land. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The issue is, we touched on the solid waste authority. That was a key to the whole county. Can this you is the county. The solid waste authority. I'm, I'm new to this. So okay. The solid waste authority Please. is created in 1980. Is it a county government agency? It's a county state. agency. It's a state. State. state agency. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay. State. This is the complication. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. But. but you, you, it was created by legislation from the state of West Virginia mandating that each state or county come up with a day appointed board. The board the, the, there's a board of five representatives, two from the county, okay. appointed by the county, one from the uh, DEP, one DEP. from the Soil Conservation District, and one oh, from the Public Service Commission. Right. Public Service Commission, that's right. Now, this is a very key aspect as created by the state law in 1988, that this would be the central of your whole county. These issues here are countywide, not just city specific. Right. We talk about the city because it is a political boundary that we have some control, and the fact that work, what works in our favor is density of population. Mm -hmm. right. right. And when you get out beyond that, you get, you know, still around the city, we have density of population in the states. Mm -hmm. uh, cheat way. I'm up right. in Imperial View. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So yeah. you want it? The 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 solid waste authority again is the key figure, working with the county commission and the state solid waste management. Board. So you're looking at another situation that, like I said, there's seven haulers in the in this county. Okay. State tells us who our haulers are. Mm -hmm. Okay. State. Oh, okay. Right. So. There's kind of an issue there, but through the solid so waste. Monopoly? Yeah, this public service commission. Public service commission right? Gives them yeah. each. Gives them each a little. Yeah, they have. They yeah. operate. Well, well, we've changed the law. The law that's not really not, 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 not on. Not on. Not going to public service commission. Well, we're talking about. We've almost passed the taxi law. Eliminating public service commission regulation. Right. That needs to be done in yeah, the garbage I mean, industry. Private enterprise. I mean, <laughs> well, free enterprise would be a lot cheaper. But what my, my point is, I know you don't want to hear that. that this group, <laughs> the public service, <laughs> they don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. The, the solid waste authority is the hinge pin to the gate. They need to look at all the issues pertaining to trash management in the county, Mon County, and work with the county commission because this is the highest elected local officials. They represent us all, whether no matter what city we live in. Yeah. We, they represent right. us all. The whole area. That's exactly right. So if if we can, we're so small. We're eighty five thousand households throughout the county. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with Allegheny County has more people than the whole state of West Virginia. Yeah. So really, we're a pimple that big on the whole deal. So we need to work together. To you know, I live. I can spit on the Marion County line, but I'm a Mon <laughs> County person. But I, like I said, I'm in no man's land. So out there. I don't expect curbside recycling. You do like take Maryland. Maryland, for example, they'll when you get out in the rural areas, they have the place where you take they have an area that you take your recycling, the your trash, and yeah, large boxes. items. I lived in it's, Southern Maryland. Green yeah. box. So you understand how that works. Yeah. So it, it, That's what we're doing. We <laughs> need <laughs> that here. Because no, and, and Bertha's Hill curbside recycling is not an option. It's not a good <laughs> option. But not for me. But I need a place I can go conveniently, put my tra or my recycling or my trash stuff. So there's a lot of ways to manage it. But it really starts on the county level through the Solid Waste Authority from the state. And you can really work out a plan for Mon County. Yeah, I was just happen. wondering if any bigger communities, I mean, we have like 100 plus houses up yeah. there, if there's anybody doing it's that. Can I make a quick like clarification? Just because I think that some people in the room aren't quite sure what we're talking about. I just wanted to make a really generalized statement that the Solid Waste Authority was in control of the Community Recycling Center, which serviced everybody else except for Morgantown. Is that's well, what was happening? Morgantown. No, it did Morgantown. Morgantown. It did Morgantown, and yeah. then we switched. We Morgantown them. made a contract with. No, no, we used to we used to bring the material to Solid Waste to the Solid Waste Authority. Authority. But right. the question okay. was, was, and, and not, I'm not here to beat anybody up. The yeah. question was, did they want to? Go, 
Mm -hmm. They want to go to the 21st century or stay in the 20th century. Right. right. Meaning that right. single stream, we knew at single stream we can go from 200 tons to 900 tons. Well, Do you yes. want to stay at 200 tons? Why? And someone else mentioned it here in one of the presentations, and Gilbert mentioned it. What did the students of, Morgan, of Western Union say? Make it simple. Mm -hmm. So what happened was we made it simple. We Real went from simple. 200 to 900 tons because we made it simple. I'm not here to beat up anybody who was on the board or associated with the board. They decided they didn't want to, that they knew this happened, that this is what was going to happen. They said, we don't want to do that. Right. So the question was, this, the city had a decision then to make. Do we want to go, is, was, it, was it their responsibility to keep the salt waste story in business? Or was it their responsibility to do what was best for this community? Well, and it was, but, they, they deemed it was, that was best. And it was, uh, it was, um, Unfortunate because the Solid Waste Authority in its day was marvelous. They were absolutely, they, they mm -hmm. gave marvelous recognition, they treated their employees well, they, yeah. they purchased equipment to deal with all the individual recycling. They would know at any given time, this is, weren't they all volunteer? No. Uh, no, they were paid. They were paid. They were paid. Right. Right. The whole issue. Sorry. Right. Anyway. It's not like being, not like being a volunteer anyway. a lot of right. time. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, from, from, a, from somebody looking in from the outside over a number of years, uh, in its heyday, it worked out very well. They had different people that had different skill sets, and, and they purchased equipment, and they, and they, but once it would go to single stream and go somewhere else, then you don't have employees doing the same things, you don't get to use all of your equipment. I just think it's hard sometimes for people to make that transition and apparently well, there was an the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Can I, can I make one, just one point on, on the county basis and the state passage from what I think is important to mention? Someone said it would be cheaper for if we didn't have, have a monopoly. Let me just tell you one thing though. In West Virginia, you have a lot of rural folks in West Virginia. Yeah. And remember this, if you decide to go unmonopolized, that means that some might say those people who are up in the haulers, we don't want to service you. So just remember that those seven haulers and the service too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Right, just like the post office, we all know that deliver mail in Morgantown cost X. To deliver that mail up on Breeds here, whatever you called it, it costs more. But does One. it cost? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But it costs the same because as a society, we've just kind of decided that there are certain things that should be fair for everybody. If you take that and say. You people in the haulers of West Virginia, you're on your own. Well, you could also say that the county has the authority to negotiate a, con a single contract. They do. They well, do. that would that would have to be a legislative action for yeah. the county. Right. Would have to have right. a rule. Well, that's not impossible. No, it's not. I'm, I'm right with you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm with you on that. And Amanda, what you're doing is basically what tonight is what should have happened and should be going on, as we've learned. That is what the Solid Waste Authority is charged to do. Educate and do that. And that's where the elephant, and I don't want to say bad to them, but that's the problem. That's the elephant in the room that's not doing their job. And we've not seen them in the recycling. It, it, it's been, but where are they? They're still charged with the comprehensive plan, and they're still charged with educating the public. Why are they not doing that? But we can't. Here in this room, we can't do much about that. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking about the monopoly, right? So, I mean, right now those those haulers aren't getting service. We're not getting service a half a mile outside of the out of the city line. So, for they're getting service for garbage. Well, garbage. For, garbage. for garbage, sure, oh. but for recycling, if we're thinking about that and, and that's not mandatory, having mandatory, right? That's what? what everybody has to. No, no. no. Garbage garbage the, the deal is, is no, you have 30 fun. days. You, you can hold sticker. garbage for 30 days, and you take it to the transfer station yourself. You save your receipt because. If we knock on your door and say, "Where's your, you know, what are you doing with all this garbage here?" Well, I take it myself. Here's my slips. Right. You got those slips, no problem. Otherwise, you can decide. Could we make garbage pickup and recycling a requirement that if you did garbage pickup, you also are required to do absolutely, recycling? Absolutely. Oh, sure, but I will tell you this: you'll never. I, I would be the first one out there because we'd probably be paying a hundred dollars a month just for that. Everybody. It would nearly double your rates. Yeah. Because oh, rate. yeah, just, yes. just think about how we service some. You know, I was in yeah. the office in, in Fairmont today. We have three pickup trucks that have metal bins in them. They have metal wire around them because that's how we have to go get the garbage in the haulers throughout the county. You got at past Cheat Lake. We're going down county dirt roads mm -hmm. and getting the garbage. And we have my point is, I mean, it's so labor intensive to go get those haulers 
they'll get down and get those, those spread out areas. We actually have pickup trucks with bins where we throw the trash and the stuff in the bins because you can't get a big garbage truck back there. You know, so it's... Well, even on the tight Morgan Park Street. Yeah, sure. Um, but why are there not more often more bins? Single screen. Can that not happen? We're talking about outside the city? Yeah, from the county. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a point a question I have also was sure. when the community recycling center that was the county controlled and solid waste authority controlled. Not that, county controlled, solid waste authority. The solid waste control. authority controlled. When that shut down, yes. there was no recycling options for citizens outside Correct. of Morgantown to take their recycling to somewhere to have it recycled Correct. and right. that's why we've set up the saturday program with the county commission but we, to we, fill we that try to do we try to do the other sites we try right. to do we try, we try to spread them around we we, we took four sites that people would let us in mm -hmm. and they didn't work because, because people threw their stuff everywhere there was no control they monitor there's yeah there's no control <laughs> or monitor right. on that and that's the problem and we're spending a hundred thousand dollars, and people say, "Wait a second!" And this is what people don't understand: we're spending a hundred thousand dollars to get our recyclables to take it out, and we're thankful because if not, I'll tell you what will happen. And Jim will tell you: in the past, it was—I'll tell you what people did with the garbage and recycling in the county. What they did? They threw it over here. And we're not out. having that bigger problem as we had in the past because we've made it somewhat accessible. These guys pay. The county commission pays three guys. They work for me. Mm -hmm. They go out and clean the roads every day. We all do. We all pay that. Well, I'm just saying, but they, but they, <laughs> it's not a tax. No, but they're, but they're <laughs> doing it. They're well, it could be going somewhere else. else. To do yeah. it. Yeah. We used to use prisoners. Right, right. We can't get them anymore. Yeah. But so they made the decision to do that. Oh, we have fun. So, and all, the county is paying for all of, for what we do with recycling in the county right now. Yes. yes. And the people are not that are bringing their recycling. They don't have to pay anything. No. Right. Right. Well, right. Okay. And so this is what all about but all your taxes are paying for. Or able to do, or is it just because you can't find any place to put them anymore? No. Well, the bottom line is. Yeah. What's the you, limitation? What the limitation is. Yeah. Okay. Look what we've done. I mean, limitation right now is say 400 cars that we're doing. You, here's the problem, folks. The people who vote in this era don't recycle. Uh, you know, you think everyone does, but they don't. This is not a priority. It's never been a priority. We have made it a priority because we want we want to do it. But unfortunately, you can't put stuff out. I mean, I don't know how what we would do. Have two different sites. You still wouldn't have as many. You had the same basic people that are doing it. We see the same people. I know them. I wish we could expand it more. What, would, what would more volume mean? Gosh. Nothing. Yeah. Don't mean nothing. Yeah. Well, more mean, volume, mean. volume would, would spell some Less infrastructure end. problems. Yeah. Right. Well, then why, are, what, why is it a problem that we're not doing enough recycling? We are doing. We're doing. There's two. It's like we're not recycling enough in the city because that's its own separate. Well, in the city of Morgantown, we want to increase recycling rates. We already have a fixed system, the single stream recycling. We want to reduce contamination and increase recycling rates. In the city, that's what the education programs are tailored to do. Because in Morgantown, we have a system set up to take care of this. Outside of Morgantown, in the county, right now we this the. Um, Solid Waste Authority's Community Recycling Center doesn't exist anymore, so we're, we're using volunteers. I know, but I'm, I'm asking Tom, right. what you said, we're not recycling enough, but I, I, I was... Well, because, you you know, because we're only recycling the, the ones who... The problem is... Well, you get the media. I, I'm, I'm straight forward. The problem is people <laughs> are too entitled and lazy. Bottom line is they, they're willing to maybe put it outside mm -hmm. at their doorstep. They're not willing to go during Saturday morning or during the week to drive for three miles if they really cared about it. And, and they don't. There, there really isn't that interest. So you have the people who care about it and we're willing to try and provide that. But you, you can, for example, we're putting out the Western End. We're losing it because no one on the Western End is using the weights down. We have to get rid of it. Is it Saturday that you have, um, are, is it crowded? Are back, cars backed it, up? Not really. It used to be. It takes 30 seconds. Yeah, it but takes about 30 seconds to go through. And that's without volunteers. Yep. And it, it works good. Like, you know, normally we do about four or five bins. Last week we did six. Six. Because we had an off week. So you say bins. 30, 30, 30 yard roll off. You off. did six Westover getting yeah, the we did six Yes, yes. Westover is full too. And Westover is full. And the thing about Westover, when you talk once again about 
you know, th theirs is behind fences mm -hmm. with gates. Yeah. So block can, it. It's completely controlled. They have cameras on it. They've written tickets for people yeah. left stuff on the ground over there. So, I mean, it's working over there, but, but once again, there's one other problem. What you said, what time does it close? Is it 11 o'clock on Saturdays? For us? No, the, uh, the transfer station. The transfer station. Yeah, have so back. we have to get the bins back, and then you have it now. You try and take those trucks during football season and, you know, and go through. So you have that problem, too. So we are paying extra, basically, for these overtime. People do overtime so they can get this in. So this is what the county believes in, in wanting to help the, the public to do. So, so could, could we... As you're, you're going to ask questions, but yeah. I'm just from a city of Morgantown perspective and from the fact that we're at this really cool workshop and we have people here from all the different areas, it would be really nice to come up with um, some common, like, like you seem to have a nice sticker that can go on people's bins. We don't have, we don't have a sticker currently in Morgantown, um, some kinds of public education pieces. But items, maybe some videos, maybe we can get some, some up on some of the public we have that. stations. But it's on our website. As as, but I think that if we kept using those materials across the area, I know that students have asked, um, students who happen to be in the city have asked if they could have recycling, and they didn't. Uh, they got bins and then they were taken away in part because um, there wasn't the public education piece. But it just seems like we have this desire to go to some next level to have businesses more students have the opportunity it just would be really nice to just keep pushing this forward on how we can get to the next level to have more businesses more students a more yeah, clean it's really frustrating because i generate a lot of paper in my office and i have no recycling even though i pay for garbage and i would really and I, my office is in the middle of the and so part of it is having a downtown solution, which we've talked about for a long time. Well, part of your, the problem again is infrastructure and storage. <coughs> yeah, where to put it? You don't have we don't have proper enforcement. No, we don't. I mean, on any level in the county, we don't have proper enforcement. So if we set all the rules in the world, <laughs> we have laws on the books. Don't enforce them. That's number one problem. <coughs> number two is infrastructure. Again, if you want to look at countywide, you can't have curbside up the hall. There's no. But you need drop-off centers for where it's applicable throughout the county, just like they do in counties in Maryland. Yes. They do that. I mean, if you drive out 68, you'll see one right off 68. Middle mm -hmm. of nowhere, there's all kinds of, and it's, it's fenced in. There's only access at certain, certain times knowledge. of the day. And there's a person they're managed, there. Mm -hmm. They're paid for through your property taxes. You pay your trash through your property taxes every year uh -huh. in Maryland. So, I mean, the issue of, we have in Morgantown, like, okay, so we're back to infrastructure. Like, where do we put the recycling cans? Uh, and, and my presentation was, we got to settle down trash. we got to make sure trash, trash is not going correctly. Mm -hmm. And it needs to go correctly and get it out of sight, get it working, so that, okay, i got a trash can here, recycling can here. Because we do have the, the uh, benefit of high density. Downtown were too dense. Most buildings mm -hmm. don't even have a place for people to store their trash. Yeah. I mean, half the buildings in the downtown have no place to store their trash. They throw it right out on the sidewalk. Right on the sidewalk. So they need whacked to do that. I mean, every time somebody does that, they need whacked. So it hurts them when they do that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just, it, 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 it is. I mean, there's, it's an enforcement issue, it's an infrastructure. And if you can get those two things under hand, your recycling program will work. And you can institute. I think we've looked at it with um, infrastructure and how do we, um, something I talked to Trevor Lloyd about was vertipack systems, um, which would be like compactors. Big, yeah, big trash compactors well, that would be used downtown. We are presently looking with Republic to replace one and put it behind two of them. Uh, one behind Daniels, the other one up uh, in the next part. Uh, but that would take those little dumpsters, there's two little two yards in there, but it would give us the ability to manage 115 cubic yards of trash every week, rather than having it all over the place, wow. outside the corral, in the park. But there's a lot of, but there, again, you talked about earlier, there's a lot of, there's a lot of liability issues, because then what happens is if you're XYZ restaurant, and there's snowing out, 
that person now has to push that cart, you know, a block down the street. You know, and it's, it, there's a lot of oh. there's a there's a lot of issues um, that are going on. There. Let me just kind of I know we're getting close to the end of the time here. Let me just say this much though: as a person who travels, who, who does recycling in many many states and deals with many different legislatures, um, is that let's not forget this. And I think I, I love everyone leave, leave her in pause of saying this: whether it's Marion County or whether it's the city of Morgantown. Recycling is good. Recycling is working. Okay, I think we need to all be positive ourselves, saying, "What can we do?" And leave ourselves with the thought, "What can we do better?" But I know that you want to see more time do better. It's, we talk a little more time. It is in, in the scheme of the university, the county, and the city. We are number one in this state. Mm -hmm. There is no one doing better recycling than this county in the whole entire state. Now, if you want to compare yourselves to a county in Oregon. Probably not doing the best, but I will tell you, in this county, with the laws on the books, the infrastructure we have, number one. Let's just don't forget that. Don't forget we're number one in the state, and I'm proud of that. And I applaud that you're going to send out a mailer. I think that as somebody who's moved, as somebody who's lived in apartments, people move. They don't always remember or know when they come into town what needs to be recycled. So I think it goes in a bill. But when you had your, when you first initiated this program, you had a lot longer list of what could and couldn't can, uh, be put in here. And for one, I see not accepted on here is cardboard, office paper, phone books. I thought all the three of them. And I, and a, this is a draft, and I, and I have to go through it. it. Yeah, so we get, I and think we're going to, and, and Tom, I talk about we're going to add, we're going to add more documentation on there. What do you even call it? About e-waste. Yeah. We're going to tell folks on there how, how do you, because you know, we do do e-waste. Yeah. In this city, we do do e Well, matter of fact, we do e-waste in whole, any place that we service in the county, mm -hmm. we do e-waste. Mm -hmm. But we're going to put some more about e-waste. I'm, okay. I'm listening. Do you have something else? So, so I think there's some mista wrong? just mistakes. Yeah, this is a draft. Someone so I think some of this information is just wrong, that you yeah. do recycle cardboard, yes. that you do recycle office paper, yes. 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 you do maybe recycle, you maybe you yeah. recycle yeah. phone books sometimes. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. They just so it must be from some some yeah, other community or something. It's a yeah. I just trying to pull it together. Yeah. yeah. We got a bunch of other. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I think the I, chief question. I wanted, the chief. I wanted to also um, say that um, I think it would be useful to have on here. You know, I try very hard to recycle as much as I can, but there are always times I have questions when there's like a um, orange juice container that has a plastic turn-on lid that, you know, has got wax covering on the outside, or wax paper cups, do they get recycled, can they be recycled? All these questions always happen. And it would be nice if you actually had an item on here that explains what contamination does. You know, an That's item that says, it, you know, when something gets mixed in, what happened? You know, like, is that, do you have to do special sorting of it, or is there, does you that whole can go I'm into probably, the no, trash? I'm going to take a little different approach to that. Contamination, while it hurts, there's two things about contamination. It, if, if you just throw it in the garbage, it's going to go in the garbage. If it goes in the recycling bin, it's still going to go in the garbage. Yeah. Now, we want to, you want to keep down contamination to a certain acceptable level, because, but, because it takes time to run it through production. But, Here's the, 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 the true thing is, by going to single stream, we gained a lot more tons. This contamination, the con contamination level is about 2 to 4% without single stream. Contamination with single stream is about 10 or 11%. So, but it's, it's, it's worth it to get the extra things. But I can add more, try to get more on there about what's taken and what's not. I'll try to make more right. questions. I have a question about that because one of the main issues that we, when we talked to the public before about contamination was that uh, public employees were dumping recycling bins into trash trucks because of contamination. If they flip, they were told if they flip the lid open and they see latent contamination, that whole pot okay, immediately so goes in the... What that, what that points to was in student areas where they just used the recycling containers as trash containers. Right. Okay. They weren't really, it wasn't really recyclables. And that was what, what the real problem was because you see a truck coming picking up green. Now, understand if and we told them if it's contaminated, being the fact, if it's all trash, that's not contaminated, that's just trash. They don't want to recycle, they're just using it as a trash container. And that's okay. why we pulled a lot so of the bins out of the student areas. We, if we have a contamination problem within the city trash, he lets us know. We haven't had that. 
Okay. Like, so recently, we had it. We had it when we first in 2013. We had a lot of trash. Yeah. But it settled down to the point that mm -hmm. we're kind of happy with that because Green Star lets them know because they're home, and then they let us know, hey, we got an issue. Okay, then their drivers need to be looking out for that. So you took the green ones away from the student areas. We did because it was it got to be just. just that's that's what my point is. We've got to settle down the trash that we reintroduce because in the student areas you can't unless you're a single family household. In other words, if you have three students living in one house, it's okay. But if you have multi units, these bins sitting all around it's contaminating and ugly as anything. We need big containers with big containers so we can manage the trash and the recycling. Thanks for coming. What else? What, what else can I have? Yeah, well, the other thing is what I was noticing in my neighborhood is, and with my neighbors even, I'd have to talk to them about it, is they would take your list really seriously, put everything in a plastic bag, and then throw the plastic bag in the trash container. So I think you need to say something about no plastic bags, which isn't on here, and then also just you know, dump directly into the container. Do not, you know, try to bag it and put it in the container because that's where I thought so many people were just out of convenience sakes of getting it from their right. house to the container. It, it makes, in. I will agree, that's probably a bigger issue than contamination yeah, that for is. two reasons. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when it comes across a sort line, if they don't grab, if, it, if, the, if, the, if the bag flesher doesn't get it and cut it, it can get thrown out as trash. But remember, this all gets sorted. This machine sorts it all electronically. There's no, there's, there are some hands involved in it, but much of it isn't. And it comes across the conveyor belt, and that can think of, it goes so fast. And if they try to pull the bags and stuff out, but if it doesn't, then someone's thrown it out. And we were could considering you, that as a form of. Yeah, we, we have a video for that we, on our website. Could you, could, could you recommend that on your list of yeah, how yeah, you yeah, store yeah. it yeah. in your house? Sure. Could, could we at our next green team meeting invite people who are here who are interested to to work through this and send you some suggestions? Well, I, I'm, I'd rather, I mean, I can't, I'm trying to get out soon. Now. And I'm taking right. these notes because I have. Keep going. Uh, yep. Don't worry, too many hands. We also well, have, don't worry about, we have another, we have to be out by uh, 740, but we have about 10 minutes. So we're okay. So then so, what else do you have? Yeah, well, I, I heard, you know, the whole pizza box thing of splitting your pizza box. That, but there's all those things that you had mentioned in that first mm -hmm. flyer that, like I said, I was on this. Do you have a copy of the first flyer? I have it, not with me, but I have it, okay. I have it on my there computer. Was, um, there are some around here. Right? But ideally, I think also is something that goes on the, I don't understand whether we have to pay for this or not, but a sticker that you put right on that container w before you give it to a new person, you know, or, or something that when you open a, a recycling container and they see that there's trash or contamination in there, some type of like letter right there and saying this is illegal. We most of you know. the time the guys don't see it. It's in there because it's, yeah, it's got a it's got, it's got a mechanical arm. Really it's going like that. You know, it's, you know. Um, as far as putting those labels on the containers, I mean, something to look about. I mean, maybe that's something we could try to get funding for. But that's what they do in Oregon. It's thousands. You're talking with right. four, seven thousand bins, sixty five hundred bins on the street in Morgantown. Um, that's a lot of money. They're not. They're not like a dollar. Yeah. Those things are two, three, four dollars a piece. Right. You're talking more than that. Well, then the labels. Than that. You're talking okay. ten, then twenty thousand dollars to, to get on If it's cheaper that. to put this in the mail, I'd almost say every, you know, quarterly, a list needs to go out in the bill, reminding people what can be recycled and what can't be. Not like well, our once every get, five our, years. Our goal is to get the, the, the this out. A lot, quick, a lot more often. I agree with you. We need to do this more often. But well, especially with this much turnover in this yeah. community. I agree. And, and yeah, because we yeah. have hospital, we have hospital people, university people, people from federal facilities. And you know, we've been talking. You know, Jenny and I have been talking about this for about six, seven months. We've been trying to get Not this thing. We're getting to a point now work. where. But yeah, you can. But we need to make sure it that it's useful and right. Right. And has well, the right I can give a discount. The city gives some form of a discount if they do so much recycling. Then they get something off the garbage bill. Too much, too hard to track. Yeah, I'm not and, saying and for you. Everybody's doing that's it. A, yeah. Well, I know. No, that's no, what I'm saying. What, 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 time out. There, there, there's not enough of a savings right now. It costs almost dollar for dollar. Okay. Recycling today to get it to Pittsburgh costs almost okay. dollar for dollar. But but what does it cost to make new landfills? And do we have lots of places to do right. landfills? We've got. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say that, but 
We got plenty of spaces. We, oh. Landfills are, are there's. Well, that was well, the I last really thing like I was going to suggest. So putting something about landfills on my property. I mean. You know that there's an aesthetic quality to living out in Tyrone. Where it's a beautiful area, mm -hmm. but like where I live, you know, as soon as somebody goes to McDonald's, they're dumping on my property. Two miles and every two months. Yeah, we get stuff. Yeah. So, I, w I I'd like to just um, say one last thing. I'm interested in looking at the law and seeing what we could do to make things better for recycling. I'd like to compete with Oregon. I'd like Long County to compete with Oregon and say we're we're not only number one in the state, we're we're in competition with one of the best states in the country. So I would be very interested in talking to people about ideas on how we can loosen up, how we can strengthen, um, what states have better laws. Um, and it's kind of short because if I were going to do something, it would need to be introduced this session. But it doesn't have to be perfect either. Well, we were doing recycling illegally, technically by law. We had to get permission from the Public Service Commission through the Solid Waste Authority, the county. So our recycling program is legal now, because that's why we're, we're so successful, because we had to go through to get approval. And but there we, is, Tom, we can have a conversation. Yeah. I would like to talk you know, to sure. anybody else around about um, what we could do to make our law better and what we could do to improve recycling. And I agree. I think the idea of this meeting was to have follow-up, and I imagine it will be the case.